In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. We're here in La Ranger at the blacksmith shop of Kay Jenkins. You might be familiar with him. He's actually the winner of season seven's Forged in Fire for making some really nice knives. I'm Kay Jenkins. I'm from La Ranger, Louisiana, and I have been making handmade knives since I was about 12. And I started doing this when I was about 12 um, because my grandfather did it full time for, you know, 30, 40 years. Um, and I saw him doing it and I wanted to do it. So I started by melting lead um, back like right behind us. Um, but uh, my, sooner or later, my grandpa saw how interested in I was and what he was doing. And he gave me a forge and an anvil and um, I started same spot where my shop is built, right behind me. I signed him up for baseball, like t-ball. Yeah, like his first day at practice, he got hit in the head with a ball and came home crying. He didn't want to go back. That didn't work out. But like 4-H was families like us. And so people travel to ball tournaments. We travel to shooting sports. And I like to, that he uh, associates it with like his grandpa and his heritage. If you first take a look at my grandfather, he's got a long white beard, um, doesn't, I mean, you can't even tell if he's smiling, even if he is smiling, because his beard, he critiqued a lot. Every kid needs to find something they can be successful at. So this was his place where he could be successful and he could leave here feeling good about himself. I had the opportunity to be on the show Forged in Fire. There's four bladesmiths that go head to head in three rounds of knife making competition. In the end, there's two that go into a finale and they have to make like a full size sword and the winner is chosen and the winner wins $10,000. He talks like he knows a lot, but I don't know a lot about it. So when you get in that realm and there's other People who've been doing this for a long time, like, well, is he, is he really that good? I don't know. Um, I kind of went on to there actually, you know, <laughs> not, not, you know, having the expectation of I'm going to blow them away. It was more of an expectation of I'm just going to do the best I can, you know, and, and, and if it's not good enough, then it's not good enough. That's just, you know, kind of how God you know, intended it to be. Some people have more of a rough design. I'm really bad about not having a design in mind. And like, as I'm forging, I'm like, oh, you know, I need, to, I need to think about this for a second. I can't tell you how many knives I've pulled out of a quench. Yeah, you know, like it had a warp in it and I just wanted to bend it a little bit and I've popped it in my hands, you know, they break like glass. Um, I can't tell you how many times um, I glued on a set of handle scales and then dropped the knife and both of the handle scales popped off, you know? And it's, it's a trial and error thing, and you learn what works and what doesn't, but stuff breaks all the time. There are some days he comes in, and he's so frustrated, and he'll do all that work, and then he comes in, and it fell apart, and it didn't come out right. But that's life, you know, so he's learning all these life skills. None of my friends' brothers are blacksmiths. If he starts on a knife, then he will not quit. Like he'll come inside and then for like five minutes and then come back outside. 
like for me I like to sit down for like five hours and then I'll do something but he's up and always on the go. I've had I had a order come in from Europe and Australia. I shipped an order to Canada about two weeks ago or something like that. We're making a knife kind of like this. Um, got a little shorter blade on it, but it's just a hunting, skinning, all around use knife. It's got a little bit of drop point on it. Handmade custom knives are not like a very common thing. Well, people come to me and they want something special. You know, they, they don't want what's in a store. And especially when you use a knife that often, so like certain, so like, um, you know, people who do a lot of hunting, um, chef's knives, um, you know, carving knives. A knife is a very, very, very old tool, evolved into so many different, you know, shapes and sizes, and they are so, so specialized. They want it a certain way for a certain reason and that's how they want it and so that's what I do. I, I make it how they want it. Papa can't swing the hammer anymore so all of these things that he has has some kind of story from his grandpa. So you know having that Heritage, you know, that's just important. Like, be proud of where you come from. I, I'll never stop doing this, that's for sure. Um, I'm always going to do it, but I love it when somebody comes to me and says, You make me a knife. Don't care what it is, don't what it looks like. I just want a beautiful knife.